Series and sequence, ACT practice uh, question of the day, and this is practice number two. So it says that A sub 1 is 1, and A sub 2 is 2, and for every number past that point, so 3 and beyond, we're going to refer to this equation. We want to find the first seven terms of the sequence, so let's make seven blanks. We know the first blank is 1, and we know the second blank is 1. So let's start with the third one. I'm going to substitute 3 in wherever I see an n. So a sub 3 is equal to a sub 3 minus 1 plus a sub 3 minus 2. Now 3 minus 1 is actually 2, and 3 minus 2 is actually 1. So what is a sub 2? It has a value of 1. And what is a sub 1? 1. And it says to add those two values together. All right, a sub 4, so I'm substituting 4 in wherever I see an n. a sub 4 is a sub 4 minus 1 plus a sub 4 minus 2. Well, 4 minus 1 is really a 3, and 4 minus 2 is really a 2. So the third number is 2, and the second number is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. A sub 5 is a sub 5 minus 1 plus a sub 5 minus 2. So here we have 4 and here we have 3. We're going to take the fourth number in the sequence plus the third number. 3 plus 2 is 5. And some of you may have recognized, and you can continue to do the same pattern until we get to a sub 7. But remember, with standardized tests, most of them are timed. And if there's a quicker way to figure out the answer, we would prefer to use that method. So as you can tell, we're adding continuously the last two numbers. So to get the third, we added the last two. To get the fourth, we added the last two. To get the fifth, we added the last two. So how do I get the sixth? Add the last two. How do I get the seventh? Add the last two. So the correct answer is answer option E. Please flip to the back. <coughs> Please be quiet. You have one minute. Begin. Please write down summation. This is summation notation. You can see the word sum is in summation. And so how this problem works is it says, hey, I'm going to give you an example here. And once you understand this example, I want you to apply that concept to the next summation. Here's how summations work. Summations take the variable expression that's given, and you continuously add that exact same expression as many times as it calls for. So let me explain this first one. This says start with 1 and continue to go to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This particular example says we're going to use 2i. So 2i, 2i. And we're going to add them together. Always add summation. We're going to add them together, and you're going to substitute in 1, in this case for i, and then 2, all the way to 10. So you're going to grab a calculator, and you're going to help me with this right now. When I substitute in a 1, I know 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 
4 times 2 is 8. You can see the pattern here. Continue to add these, please. So I went from 1 to 10. I went from 1 to 10, and I substituted each one of those numbers, 1 through 10, into this expression. Substitute in 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10, and then you add them together, summation. When you add this list together, do you come up with 110? We're going to do the exact same concept now with this. But instead of starting at 1, you're going to start at 0. So you're going to go 0 to 5. <laughs> And I'm going to put a k squared. They can use whatever variable they want. Okay, so remember we're adding these together. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and 5 squared. If you add this together, you should come up with 55. 